Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for uh, today's uh, OCSS uh, Child Support Information Hour. Uh, and the topic for the day is debt reduction options for, for NCPs. We're going to cover a lot of ground. Our services at the Office of Child Support Services uh, are all tied around putting children first and trying to help both parents support their children, which is as it should be. Um, uh, if you helped bring a child into the world, whether by plan or by surprise, um, it's only appropriate that both parents support that child. So we do this um, by locating NCPs and establishing parentage, AKA paternity, establishing child support orders, monitoring and enforcing those orders and uh, helping NCPs to find employment and avoid and manage debt. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And we'll dig a little deeper into the life cycle of a case. Next slide. But to get us started, let's make sure we all have the same basic vocabulary. Child support uses a lot of abbreviations. So the CP is the custodial parent, the parent with whom the child spends the major child or children spend the majority of time. The NCP is the non-custodial parent. The non-custodial parent uh, has the children for less of the time, uh, but is the one who will be paying child support either to the custodial parent or to the Department of Social Services, DSS which is the parent agency of uh, HRA and the Office of Child Support Services. And we'll talk in a minute about when and why uh, child support may be paid to DSS rather than the custodial parent. Current support is the amount an NCP is required to pay regularly. Uh, that is to say, uh, pursuant to the child support order, which is issued from family court, uh, and it might be $100 every two weeks. So that means current support, uh, the NCP is expected to pay $100 every two weeks. If the NCP misses a payment or two or three, then the account will have arrears, and arrears are unpaid child support debt. And that's the principal subject we're going to be talking about today. Cash assistance benefits, uh, CA, uh, also known as public assistance, um, or TANF, Temporary Aid to Needy Families, is the factor that determines whether the uh, NCP uh, makes a payment that is that then goes to the custodial parent or to DSS. When the child or children, not the individual adult, but when the child or children on the case are receiving cash assistance benefits, including SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition, uh, or uh, Medicaid, uh, at, for those times, the, uh, uh, the NCP payment will go to the Department of Social Services uh, with a pass through to the custodial parent. We'll look at that in a little more detail very shortly. So those are the terms that we need to master. Let's go to the next slide. So here's the life cycle of a child support case. And it's important to realize it's a long relationship. You know, you may shop at a couple of different places to get food. Uh, if you have to travel somewhere, you might choose a bus or a, a train or a one airline or the other. Mm -mm. With child support, you are our client for a long spell. If, for example, a case is opened when the child is two years old, um, in New York State, the uh, age of emancipation when child support ends is 21. So if the NCP and CP uh, start in with us when the child's two years old, we're gonna have in all likelihood a 19 year relationship. And 
you can't switch airlines. You can't say, you know, I really hate United Airlines. The next time I travel, I'm going to take American. Um, you are our uh, customer, and we are the agency that will be working with you. A case is opened. Then the next step is to establish parentage. Without uh, a determination of who the parents are, there cannot be a child support order. Establishing parentage and uh, asking for an order of support takes us to family court, where the order is established through the um, order issued by the support magistrate, which is a special part of family court. It only deals with child support. It doesn't deal with other issues such as custody. Um, and that order, as I said earlier, will uh, require a certain amount of money based on the NCP's income, ideally, um, a certain amount of money to be paid on a regular basis every week, every two weeks, twice a month, whatever the support magistrate issues. Um, uh, and it will also, the order will also address medical insurance for the child. If one or both parents have health insurance, the support magistrate will determine which parent should have the child on their on their health insurance. Uh, if there's no uh, health insurance for either of the parents, then the support magistrate will order that the uh, child be enrolled in a program such as Medicaid. Then we set out to collect and distribute support over those many years that we're together. Um, and there may well come times, and there should come times, when the order might be modified. Uh, if the NCP loses his or her job, for example, that would call for a downward modification. If the NCP uh, gets promoted to a higher salary, that should call for an upward modification. There are occasionally modifications just based on inflation and the cost of living every so many years. Uh, and if need be, we will enforce uh, orders if the NCP falls behind and there are arrears in the case. Okay, now you notice those two arrows um, at the bottom of the screen. These are the danger points. This is where debt starts to pile up. Either when the order is established, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, um, the NCP should start paying right away. Plus, there may be a charge known as retro. Uh, we'll talk about that more. Um, and then enforcing or modifying the order. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know if your hours were cut at work. We don't know if you got a promotion. So, um, it's important to let us know, particularly for the NCPs, if they fall behind um, for some reason, uh, let us know so that we can consider whether uh, working with you to get a downward modification from the court is the appropriate uh, step. Next slide. And once again, if you have any questions as we're going through this, uh, feel free to note them in uh, the chat. Next slide. Now, before we get started, uh, it's important to realize that child support is a program that covers the entire United States. It's federally mandated. Every state has a child support program. In addition to um, tribal lands, uh, uh, Native American tribal reservations have their own child support programs. Uh, and child support is locally administered, federally mandated, state supervised, and locally administered. You may wonder, why do I care about that? Why is Chuck talking about this? And the answer is simple. The programs we're going to talk about today apply to uh, child support cases that we control here in the five boroughs of New York City. We're gonna tell you about things that are available only in New York City, only if the case is a New York City case. 
And I'm guessing some of you listening today uh, may well have a case that involves another state, which makes things different, also makes it harder for us to answer questions. But uh, the way we practice child support in New York state is different from a lot of other states. For example, we don't look at immigration status uh, we, to serve uh, people applying for child support. Uh, other states do. We don't tend to put people in jail. We don't incarcerate people for inability to pay child support. The only people in New York state that we uh, uh, pursue with a threat of incarceration are people who are willfully not paying child support. The high rolling doctor who's not going to pay that no good ex of his anything and you want to take away my driver license, I'll get a chauffeur. I don't care. I'm not paying. That's the person who might find themselves uh, pursued by us for uh, enforcement measures such as incarceration. And locally administered, as I said, some of the debt reduction programs that we're going to talk about this morning are only available in um, New York in New York City cases. So for the last time, federally mandated, state supervised, locally administered. Next slide. We care about reducing debt, and we know that debt can impact an individual's mental and physical health um, and cause stress, not only for the NCP who's carrying the debt, but also for the custodial parent and the children. Uh, if debt piles up, it can specifically lead to the non-payment of current support, I owe so much, why, why even try? It can lead to conflict between the CP and the NCP, potentially less contact for the NCP with the children, and less income for low-income custodial parents. And it's very important to realize that child support is one of the most effective anti-poverty programs for low-income custodial parents and their children that exists. So it's very important and we care about that debt. Next slide. And you may wonder how much debt is there? And the answer is there's a lot of debt. Uh, custodial parents as of the end of 2022 were owed $2.7 billion. And DSS was owed $804 million. Now, we're going to, again, we're going to talk about this in greater detail, but the tools we have to reduce the debt owed to DSS are, are much greater and more powerful than the tools we have to reduce debt owed to the custodial parent. Uh, but $804 million is not chump change. So uh, we have a lot of tools we can work with to reduce that unpaid child support debt. Next slide. So uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, who gets ch the child support payment depends in part on whether or not the family, meaning the uh, custodial parent and particularly the children are receiving a benefit. If the family is not receiving a benefit, the NCP's payment goes directly to the custodial payment. Um, and the custodial parent will get 100% of the support payments and 100% of the debt payments. Um, so the um, uh, all the money, except for a $35 annual fee, goes to the custodial parent. That's also true if the custodial parent was receiving benefits, but is no longer receiving benefits, then at that point, 100% of the payments will go to the CP. Families receiving a benefit, uh, the NCP's payment goes to DSS, uh, uh, but uh, up to $200 can be passed through to go on top of the cash assistant benefits being paid to the custodial parent. So if the NCP is making regular payments um, and it's at least $100 a month, if there's one child, that $100 will be passed through on top of the uh, budget 
for um, the cash assistance. And that can increase to two children or $200 uh, if uh, the monthly payment the NCP is making is at least $200. So just to recap, if the NCP all of a sudden isn't paying, if it should be going to the CP, then the debt and arrears that pile up will also be owed to the CP. If the NCP is making uh, payments that are going to DSS and then can't make a payment, that debt will add up to DSS. That's the, uh, in that pie chart we showed you, the difference between the money that's owed to the CP versus the NCP. I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Eileen Culhane. I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, let's get started with the next section. So what we have found is that most parents receiving our services have low income. And this information is of October 2023 on the benefit status, and that includes cash assistance, Medicaid, SNAP or SSI of our custodial parents. What we found is 80% are either current or former recipients of benefits, and only 20% have never received any. In terms of non-custodial parents, that number is 63% are either current or former receivers of benefits. Next slide. Because of that, we have a two-pronged approach. So if you hit that one more time, we'll get back to that two-prong approach. And we can see here that um, we have that two-prong approach to addressing debt. And Robert, do you want to go forward to that next slide? Thanks. Okay. So what we have is in terms of our solution, we have programs designed to head off new debt or to help with debt reductions. And this is part of OCSS's mission. So the approach includes number one, early intervention for newer cases. We want to prevent the accumulation of arrears in the first place. And part two is ongoing intervention for cases that have established arrears. We believe that most non-custodial parents want to support their children but they need support themselves in order to do so. So what this equals is reduced debt, and this leads to better outcomes for children. We know from experience that it will lead to increased child support payments, and that's where children benefit. Okay, next slide, Robert. Okay, a couple of things to watch out for. Um, how does debt develop? Well, there are two potential areas, and number one is high orders. So if the parent fails to appear at their court hearing, something called a default order is issued. And this order is the highest obligation amount allowed, and it may or may not be an accurate reflection of the parent's income. So the second reason that debt can develop is that the parent does not notify the court when they experience a change in circumstance. So for example, as Chuck mentioned, there could be a loss of work, a decrease in pay. And if they return to court, it's possible to modify that order to a lower amount. If they don't, the child support order will continue to charge at an amount which they can no longer afford. So let's go on to one more slide, another area that um, debt can accumulate. So this is retroactive support. And while it's not considered debt, it's another way an NCP may accumulate arrears and child support. And so retroactive support is child support that is paid back to a past date. So usually it's the date the petition was filed. So from the date the petition was filed until the final order is issued in court, the judge may order that back uh, child support to be paid. Now, because of the pandemic, there has been a longer than normal wait. So that period has grown in time um, as well. So go ahead and animate the screen, Robert. 
Let's take a look, yeah, and how that works. So what happens is retroactive support is added to the amount deducted from the non-custodial parent's paycheck. And it's something called the add amount. The add amount is typically 50% of the child support amount. And an add amount is also added if the payment should fall into arrears. So if you take a look at that example on the screen, and let's say the current obligation amount is $100 per month, and there is $600 owed in arrears, and excuse me, retroactive support, there would be $150 deducted from the income withholding order, 100 for the obligation amount and 50 for the retroactive support. And that would continue until the retroactive is paid off. So the question is, how do you avoid this? And the way to do that is to begin making child support payments or at least saving the money when the petition is filed and keep evidence of the payments, such as a cancel check or a receipt, so that at the day in court, you can show that this amount has already been paid. Okay, next slide. Hey, and we've mentioned the importance of NCP participation. Child support is not a place where you want to ignore your mail. Um, engagement is critical and participation in the process provides protections from day one. So when the NCP goes to court, the child support order is aligned with their income and there are protections in place if the NCP has low income. Ideally, what happens is the NCP pays on time in full and it results in better outcomes for both parents and children. Next slide, Robert. Okay, so let's take a look at those per protections. And New York City has particularly robust protections for our NCPs. There's something called a poverty order, and that would be an order of $25 a month or even less for NCPs if they're earning at or below the federal poverty level. And this changes every year. But in 2024, it was $15,060. And there would be a $500 cap on arrears if the debt is owed to DSS. Uh, there's something called a minimum order. And that is an order of $50 a month for NCPs at or below the New York State Self-Support Reserve. New York realized that you need more money to live than that $15,000. Um, so their minimum is $20,331, and if you're earning below that, the order can be $50 a month. If you're or earning above those amounts, your child support will be set on something called the Child Support Standards Act, and it's a fixed percent of your income. Robert, next slide. Thank you. Okay, so... Here we have the first prong, which is in this section, we'll talk about the ways to prevent debt in the first place, right? Next slide. So the first way to prevent debt is modify an existing order. If there's a change in circumstance, have the order reflect that change in circumstance. And either party can file a petition in court to modify an order either upwards or downwards. The circumstances that could cause that is a new higher paying job or raise, job loss or a decrease in income, incarceration, sudden disability, or even a change in custody. There are times when the child no longer wants to live with the CP. They'd like to live with the NCP. Perhaps they're a teenager. You know, the child support order should be changed during those times to reflect the current circumstances. So the petition to modify can be filed by an individual without any need for legal representation. Next slide. Okay, so this is MOTS. We also have a program to modify an order using the help of OCSS, and we can facilitate that process with you and take you through all of the steps. And so MOTS 
offer the parents an opportunity to work with one of our customer service representatives. We discuss and come to an agreement on changing the existing child support order, and we'll use the same ch standard child support guidelines and calculations. So what are the benefits? It shortens the time spent in court. It aligns the order with the NCP's income, but it also gives the CP and the NCP the opportunity to ask questions in a less formal setting than court. It's also a more supportive process. We'll help you with the paperwork, we'll guide you through the process, and it allows for an open discussion between the parents. It decreases those default orders. So it really gives an opportunity to come to an agreement on the child support process in a less formal way with more support. Okay, next slide. All right, so how do you modify your order? We have a slide on how you can get in touch with us later, but in general, um, you can call that New York State helpline. There, You can always reach us at that email address on the screen, and we will be sending you this deck. You can visit us um, at 151 Broadway, or you can always mail us. But to modify an order, you're also available to go ahead and download those forms uh, that you see on the right, and you can apply directly with the court as well. Okay, next slide. So how to apply for an agreement, which is that SMOTS program. So you can go ahead and you can email that um, email address on the screen. Just go ahead and put on the subject line agreement. Um, you can always visit us at 151 West Broadway for our customer service. And when applying, keep in mind that these uh, meetings can be done in person over the phone. You can meet with the CP or you can meet uh, separately if that's better for you. So they'll work with you in terms of whatever agreement works for you. Excuse okay. me, Eileen. Yes. Uh, just a request from the translation room to speak a little slower. You got it. Okay. Absolutely. Um, thanks, Chuck. All right. So let's go on to employment and job training programs. Okay. So... OCSS knows that most parents want to support their children, and um, sometimes they need help themselves in order to support those children. So we have a number of job placement programs that I'll go through as well. There's also a link on the right where you can access more information on these programs. Okay, next slide. Right. Our first program is the Parent Support Program. It's an alternative to court that's overseen by family court. And this program connects NCPs to employment services and other programs to reduce barriers to paying child support. The program can connect NCPs to a variety of different employment programs, um, job training, mediation, uh, life skills, and other services. The program helps parents meet their child support obligation and build stronger relationships with their children. So for this program, non-custodial parents can be referred to the program when they appear in family court on their child support case. Next slide, Robert. Okay, this is a new program. It's the New York City Pathways to Industrial and Construction Career, P-I-N-C-C. So this program focuses on building a pathway to employment in high wage job sectors. So it focuses on industrial, transportation, and construction. There's weekly information sessions, on Wednesday from 11 to 12, and you can learn more or to secure a spot, RSVP by scanning the QR code or visit the link that's on that screen as well. P-I-N-C-C dot M-Y-C forward slash info session. Next slide. 
Okay, we have a text to work program. So text to work sends information about new job openings directly to job seekers cell phone. And you can text this right now if you text jobs to 877 877 you'll receive job alerts on a number of employment opportunities. Um, they focus on healthcare, retail, security, transportation, and education. Next slide, Robert. Okay, so Workforce One. So what Workforce One is, is a free virtual career center. And the system helps New Yorkers prepare for and connect to jobs in every sector across the five boroughs. Uh, they can get help via the web or phone, uh, free training, they can identify jobs for their skills, and they can prepare for interviews. So intake forms are available online at that website, you can download them and get started in that program, you know, as well. And Finally, we have Jobs Plus. Okay, so what this is, is a proven employment program for New York City public housing residents. The program offers assessments, job readiness training, job search assistance, and referrals to social supports. There's also a child support navigation assistance as well, because that will also help in obtaining and keeping employment. So thank you. Um, it's also my turn to turn this back over to Chuck. And Chuck, you can, uh, the next section in reducing debt. Thanks, Eileen. Okay, we're going to talk now about the specific programs available to reduce uh, NCP debt. Next slide. And you've seen this before, but just a reminder, uh, there's a lot of debt out there. Uh, 804 million owed to DSS, um, 2.7 billion owed directly to the custodial parent. Um, and as mentioned earlier, we have more tools to deal with the Department of Social Services debt. Now, I am willing to bet that some of you listening out there are like, I know I got debt, but I have no idea whether it's owed to the custodial parent or the non-custodial parent. Uh, to the custodial parent or to DSS. Um, and that's fine. And we're going to show you in a little bit how you can call an 800 number that's managed by the state um, that can tell you, oh, you owe $1,500, $700 of that is owed to DSS and $800 is owed to the custodial parent or whatever the case may be. Uh, we'll show you that number in a little bit. Next slide. Now, let's dig into the programs. For money owed to DSS, we have arrears cap, arrears credit, pay it off, and the parent success program. Uh, and we're going to talk about each of those. Now, you can you see over on the right, it says, uh, learn more at nyc.gov OCSS debt reduction. When we send you this uh, presentation, which we will do this week, uh, those blue uh, links are hot links that you can click on to go to that site and learn more and all the other links that are in the presentation. Next slide. So we'll start with arrears cap. Arrears cap caps arrears at $500 during the period in NCP earns at or low at or below the federal poverty level. Uh, and you can see down on the bottom, right, the federal poverty level for 2024 uh, was $15,060. To be eligible for this program, that debt must be owed to DSS, and the debt must have accrued while the child was on the order was receiving cash benefits and the NCP's income was at or below the FPL. Let me give you an example of how this might work. The average uh, individual who is released from a New York State correctional facility who has a child support um, case, the average individual 
leaves the facility with $7,500 in child support debt. Um, and in the, these instances, we weren't notified and probably the case has been charging, charging, charging the whole time the individual was upstate. Uh, I spent some time working for a nonprofit that uh, worked in the prisons. And I can tell you uh, the jobs in a correctional facility, uh, working in uh, the mess hall or making license plates or snow fence uh, pay a lot less than $15,060 on an annual basis. So, um, if someone's been in a correctional facility and the child support was uh, payable to DSS, that can be reduced to $500. So the arrears cap alone with proper documentation can wipe out 7,000 of that $7,500 average debt that uh, NCPs exiting a cor correctional facility tend to be carrying. So it's a very powerful program. Next slide. That's arrears cap. Arrears credit is a $5,000 annual credit of debt owed to DSS. I got to stress debt owed to DSS when child support is paid regularly for a full year. And NCPs can participate for three years, being able, therefore, to receive up to $15,000 in arrears credit. Uh, and the requirements are, as with all these programs, the debt is permanently owed to DSS. Current child support orders are fully paid each month for one year, whether at that time you're paying DSS or the custodial parent, or if there's no current order and just arrears, the amount on the last child support order is fully paid each month for one year. So you owe $100 a month, you pay $100 every month for a year, and you can have a $5,000 credit against arrears owed to DSS. And by the way, these programs can be combined. So you could get a downward modification. So from your the, the order that you couldn't afford to pay, $300 a month, get that reduced to... Um, $100 a month, then make that $100 a month payment for 12 months, one year, and then be eligible for a $5,000 arrears credit for that year. A uh, powerful program. Next slide. Pay it off. Pay it off uh, requires you to make a payment of $500 or more toward child support debt owed to DSS. Uh, and we will reduce your amount by doubling your payment up to the amount you owe. Now, this is a every now and then once a year special program. Next slide. This year, the horse is already out of the barn. The pay it off period was March 1st to March 15th. Uh, it will in all likelihood come back in 2025. Um, when I say it will, and you see a question mark, you might be thinking, well, why don't they know what they're doing? The answer is we have to get permission for pay it off from New York State every time we run it. So until we get the go ahead uh, to our proposed 2025 dates, uh, I can't even tell you what they are. Remember, federally mandated, state supervised, locally administered. We can administer the program, but we have to get uh, permission to run the program from New York State. We will be announcing it as soon as we know the actual dates for next year. Uh, it requires a minimum payment of $500. Uh, you have to submit a pay it off agreement, uh, and then we will reduce your debt by double that amount. Next slide. Parent success. The Parent Success Program is intended to support an NCP's well-being and improve their ability to provide for their children. It, up to $10,000 in debt can be eliminated after the NCP completes an approved substance use treatment program. So the eligibility requirement, 
debt owed to DSS, the uh, uh, requirement, program requirement, complete and approved substance use treatment program. Next slide. Now, these programs work. Take a look. Arrears cap, 284 million reduced in the span of 14 years, helping over 13,000 NCPs. Arrears credit, 87 million, helping over 5,000 NCPs. Pay it off, reduced 19 million, uh, helping over 4,000 NCPs. Yes, the programs can be combined. Uh, and uh, remember, we looked at that slide twice. There's currently about 800 million owed to DSS, but as you can see over the last uh, uh, number of years, the stats are a little different for each program, we've reduced uh, close to $400 million of, of, of debt. So that's half of the current load. Um, obviously we didn't do that in one year, but still uh, these programs are out there and we know that there are NCPs who are not taking advantage of them, who are unaware of them, which is part of why we're offering today's programs. Next slide. Mediation. As I mentioned earlier, we cannot forgive child support debt that's owed to the custodial parent. If you think about it, um, that is applicable to um, and fair. Uh, we can't say, Mr. Smith, you owe your former ex, Mrs. Smith, $4,000. We're going to wipe that out. We don't have the right to do that. The government can forgive debt that's owed to the government. The government cannot forgive debt that's owed to the individual custodial parent. Uh, but mediation services can address child support debt along with other things. Uh, we have a group of approved mediators one of the things I'll be sending you uh, to the uh, to everyone who attended today is a list of those approved mediators. They're low cost. Uh, I think one or two of them are free. Um, and mediators can help parents come to agreements about past due child support, future child support, custody or visitation. And often these things are um, combined. And I know some of you may not have a great relationship with the other parent, whether you're a custodial parent or a non-custodial parent. Um, and that's understandable, but sometimes the conflicts can be reduced through mediation. He always calls me late at night and I'm already putting the kids to bed. Uh, I wish he would communicate with me by text instead of calling. Oh, I didn't know you felt that way. I can do that. Um, so sometimes there are irritants that can be uh, reduced. Uh, you know, Mrs. Smith, ex-Mrs. Smith, that you're owed $30,000. You're never going to see all of that because uh, your ex doesn't have that high paying a job. But if instead of $30,000, he pays you $10,000 or uh, $500 a month, uh, over the next 20 months, would you forgive the other debt? Well, gee, maybe I would do that. Okay, let's see if we can write up an agreement to that effect. So um, that is the type of thing that mediation might be able to do to address uh, debt. Future child support payments. Uh, what if um, uh, I, I'm, I'm a house painter? I'm the NCP and I'm a house painter. What if I paint the apartment uh, at no charge, uh, would you uh, make a change in the child support debt? Sure, that makes sense. So uh, there are agreements that can be worked out um, uh, in some circumstances. I'm not saying all circumstances by any means, but this is what's available in terms of mediation services. Next slide. And it's back to Eileen for a bit. 
Thanks so much, Chuck. Okay, so we have a new app for you that will help streamline child support. Um, it can help you apply for child support. You're able to submit forms. There's an enforcement action out there that feels unfair. You can challenge that through the app. You're also able to make payments to us using these debit cards. There's no fee involved. You can apply for agreement or those debt reduction programs that Chuck talked about all from the app. So you can see that there is a QR code on the screen. Feel free to download it. If you're supporting people that have a child support case, you also can have access to the app to see how it works. And there's a link there that will allow you to also access uh, the download. Okay, next slide. So contact us. We have talked about the need to contact child support. Here is how to do it. The best, easiest way is to use that email address that's on the screen. So you can ask for a phone appointment if coming in is inconvenient. Ask your questions, let us know your concerns, uh, but go ahead and give as much information as you can, your name, case number, phone number, and the best time to reach you, and we'll set something up for you. Um, you can always visit our walk-in center from Monday through Friday, eight to six, and that's at 151 West Broadway. There's a New York State helpline and they're open from eight to seven. Give them a call. Um, they can help with um, a lot of the information that you're asking. Um, I saw the question come in. If you have custody of the children, contact a child support immediately to get the order reflective of your current circumstances. Uh, there's some websites there that have all the information that we have provided you, but we also have a YouTube channel. Sometimes people are preparing for court or they don't know how to fill out the forms properly. There's videos to show you how to go ahead and get all that uh, pulled together for yourself, as well as a handbook for the CP or the NCP that will answer a lot of your questions. Uh, we have another resource. Uh, Robert, go ahead with the next slide. It's called the Family Legal Care. So we know a lot of you are navigating the legal si um, system without representation. So they'll offer free legal information and advice on family law and uh, family court procedures. So they have a bilingual helpline and it'll provide legal information um, by phone and chat and email, but they'll also give you advice um, with a consultation and they'll um, provide an attorney on the video conference or phone. Now they don't represent you, but they will provide some legal advice. There's tech hubs. I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, a lot of court appearances are over the internet now. So they have computers and the internet. You can call that number um, to set up an appointment. Um, their website is familylegalcare.org and that phone number's on the screen if you'd like to get in touch with them. Um, so they can help you through a number of processes. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining us.